Mr. Masters. It's, uh, let's see, what's today? 27th of Hearthfire on the interstellar can calendar. I'm on my way in this POS that the Admiral put me in for exploration for today. I'm on my way to accuse Tau human planet. I'm about to landfall just a few seconds. Uh, bear with me while I combat these uh, hot heat entry into the planet surface. Leveling out. what I get for recording messages to you uh, while I'm on mission. The Admiral thinks that uh, this planet has plenty of resources that we can use, that the fleet can use. Whether that's dihydrogen, some other uh, relics that we can find, this planet has a, has, a, has a good abundance of uh, star bulbs, paraffinium, magnetized ferrite. Just landed. Trying to see what the weather's like. 336 degrees Fahrenheit out there. Gonna have to make sure that I have uh, I'm equipped. Recharging my ceramic heliostat here. I think that should do it for a heat planet such as this. Here I go. And uh, this will be an account of my exploration of accused Tau while I'm planet side. God, that's, that's hot. I feel it inside, uh, almost inside my suit here in the Gutongs system. But, uh, other than the exploration here, I'm, uh, as I'm set to scanning a bunch of minerals, flora and fauna, oops. Uh, while I'm recording this for you, Mr. Masters, but um, I've appreciated what you've... Uh, I've, I've appreciated sending these recordings to you because I almost feel like it's uh, it's more of a... You're almost the uh, <laughs> therapy psychologist that I never had operating out here with the fleet. Sure, I have friends. I think there's even a, a counselor within the fleet, but uh, you know, who wants to who wants to have some kind of fleet mandated uh, shrink, alright, right? But uh, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to kind of let you know what's been bothering me lately. If you're still listening to these, I know I send these to you what, almost daily. But uh, it's about a friend of mine. Uh, he's gone missing. He was, uh, he's a good guy. Trader captain. Commander of the Chromium Cormorant. And uh, the fleet lost contact with them a few days ago. It's usually not like him to, uh, well, I, sh I should back up. He he does prefer to keep to himself. I, I know that about him, definitely. And uh, just a lot of... I've known him for years. I know he comes from Interstell, and uh, he's, he's enjoying the life of a trader captain. Hauling goods and the like. And... Uh, you know, there'll be some times where he doesn't check in for a couple days, maybe. 
ducking in and out of systems, trying to hide from uh, some hostile forces, perhaps. It's all that history that he's had in Interstell as a commander, fighting the Speeman, the Alec, the Gazertoid. So he's he's well versed in in, in lots of different uh, ways to survive out there. Oh, I gotta recharge my heliostat here. In the midst of an extreme storm here on Accused Tau. Anyways, his disappearance, the fact that he hasn't checked in, is uh, has just been weighing on my mind for the last uh, few days. I know he can usually take care of himself, but uh, it's not like him not to check in, so it's just, I just wanted to share that. He just seems like a really good guy. He's really taken to uh, hauling goods uh, pretty well, especially since he never had any uh, experience with that in the first place, you know? Even though Interstell, uh, from what I hear, I have, I've had friends there as well. And sometimes that's how, that's all you can do to make a, a life, you know? You gotta finance your own, uh, ship, mine minerals, capture life forms, find the good trade routes uh, to make money so you can upgrade your ship and keep your crew happy. But uh, you know, I've had a little experience. I guess that's why the Admiral wanted me to come down here to this uh, hellacious planet here. Right now it's raining. At least the temperature's gone down to 160 degrees. But uh, the rain, oh man, it's, it's, I'm sure it's scalding. I don't know how these uh, life forms are getting, uh, getting away with it here on this planet. I guess evolution, they have thick skins, they can take it, it's normal, especially when the storms come. Like I said, 336 degrees Fahrenheit when I first landed, but I've uh, been so far as I've been talking to you, I've been mining some dihydrogen, finding some uh, standing stones, monolith, uh, not monoliths, I'm sorry, standing stones, you know, taking scans, you know, the usual, what I always uh, report to you, but I guess the uh, exploration part of it's kind of cool, I find it a, a little exciting, but it still is... Uh, bringing me back to uh, my friend he was an explorer by trade you know his, his, he had a huge background on Interstell as a commander star super photonic starship commander uh, exploring the galaxy and uh, you know there's always something about those explorers just uh, going to all these strange new worlds <laughs> Forget, I think I read that in a technical manual at some point, somewhere. But, uh, I don't know how to deal with this. Sorry, I'm. Current time is 18.15. I guess I'm having a little bit of dinner here. These smart suits really know how to internally feed you when you can't take your helmet off the nutrients that you need. I didn't want to stink up my cockpit. So you'll excuse me if I... chewing in your ear. <laughs> I really hope that when I get back to the fleet, the Admiral can, uh... give some, uh... More information on where uh, Hunter, my friend, went down. I know he was here in the Gatung system uh, not too long ago. Probably been a few days. So I definitely know he passed this way. But uh, I'm sure he'd be in a totally different system by now. Could be anywhere. 
We couldn't, uh, we couldn't really locate his ion trail. But we, I think, uh, I think the fleet science officer may have, uh, some leads that, uh, hopefully one of us can, uh, follow up on. I'll just have to figure it out once we get back. there's anything that I've also learned from uh, Hunter, he definitely knows the trade routes. He's been able to make us a fair amount of uh, income. I need to see. Oh. Keeping the fleet running. But, uh, Yeah, even Mr. I forget what his name is on the other uh, the ship, some mal some kind of ma mallard, rhodium mallard or some kind of duck, I think, a fowl, I forget what ship he was on, he was, I overheard him even suggesting that maybe Hunter went rogue, maybe he found a... Uh, the mother load somewhere on some planet. Maybe one of those uh, huge uh, legends that you hear of the riches. Huge. Uh, oh, what's this? Uh, more rusted metal, of course. But maybe he found a giant uh, stash of endurium or rhodium somewhere. And. Uh, secretly mining it somewhere and turned off his transponder so that uh, he could keep the planet a secret so that he could get rich. I don't buy that for a second. You know, screw that guy, Mr. Motts. Or, I don't know, I forget what his name is. But you know what? Forget that. Forget him. Hunter would never do that sort of thing. Nah. I know he went into business for himself, but there's a reason why he joined this fleet. He's good with people. I know he had a whole crew before in Interstell. But hey, there's something to be said about uh, having uh, one ship on your own by yourself. You can get the, uh, the other aspects with working with other people in a fleet. But you know what? Once you're in that cockpit all by yourself, that's freedom, man. Just to have the freedom to be out in space. Yeah, that's why I like exploring here. Without a crew, beholden to none. <laughs> wow, look at those stars. And I just ran into some more of these, what they call metal fingers. This will be a good uh, haul of uranium, probably gold from what it looks like. But, uh... There's no way Hunter went rogue. But we'll figure it out. He's probably just uh, relaxing on a beach somewhere on some kind of paradise planet, I'm sure. You know? Turning off the transponder. Hey, if, if the Admiral was calling me every frickin' second, I don't know that I would answer either. Sometimes you just need to get away from it all. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Masters? I don't know how you do it. You're probably sitting in an office listening to a bunch of these. Which reminds me, are you are you even in an office or are you on a <laughs> you on a therapy ship? Do they have those? Psychology? Psychology vessel? <laughs> Psych vessel? I could imagine being on board something like that. What is it, just staffed with counselors? Good God. I don't know. Oops. Oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, man. Oh. I'm not going to go into that, what I just did. <laughs> uh, 
That's no, no reason to laugh, even though I, I couldn't see the storm. Another storm. It seems like these, uh, this planet is just ripe with storms. Uh, every few minutes, every few hours. But uh, definitely getting some good, good dihydrogen and some, uh, some regular artifacts there. Really surprised I haven't stumbled on a uh, an outpost or something. I know they I know they've got them here, but again, who would want to build such a an outpost on such a humid place here? Visually, it's it's stunning. But man, the, the storms are playing uh, havoc, wreaking havoc on my systems, my visual acuity. I'd say with these storms, visibility is uh, almost nil. I just took off trying, trying to find a uh, new landing spot if I can try to find an outpost. Scanning. A few mountains in the area. Oh, crap. Jeez. Okay, I maybe not gonna talk to you for a bit. I uh, just ran into some, ran through some foliage here. Oh, jeez. Yeah, the turbulence in this thing with the storms. Maybe I should have waited until the storm subsided. But uh, and it's nighttime. It's a little harder for me to see, but I am picking up some kind of station or outpost, but visually I can't really see, can't tell what it is. Sensors are not doing anything. That might have been a trade trade outpost. I do see something else. I think I'm picking up the landing pad. <laughs> cool. With some star bulbs nearby. Definitely running into all this stuff. Good thing my shields are holding. Do see a landing pad. Coming in. Landing sequence here. Okay, let's see what we have. Man, these rainstorms are very scalding. Yes. Found a first aid kit. Boxes, some supplies left behind, oxygen capsules, sodium, camp, real egg, just a name, more dihydrogen, more foliage, where I think we're in a little bit of a canyon, maybe a valley here, between some of the mountains that we were just um, on the other side of. I think I saw some uh, couple buildings in the in the distance. Someone had structured some uh, prefab here. It's only a couple of uh, stargazers of an observatory, perhaps. We might have some good information here. We'll see, but uh, I think I might have to get get out of this storm for a while. Some of these prefab buildings uh, could be uh, some good shelter here. I think I might stay here for a few, gather my bearings, but in the meantime, I'm gonna restore my heliostat, make sure my ammo, my mining beams are, are all uh, charged up and ready to go, see if the storm will pass. Thanks for listening, Mr. Masters. I'll record some more when I get out. Out.